You got a story for us or a hand or what? It's not even a hand. It's more of a story. Okay. Um, it, it was basically, you know, local one, two, no limit game. Uh-huh. Not too bad. It's more of a bar game. It's always fun. Always a good time. I've been there numerous times. The staff there is great. I have nothing bad to say about them. But I had the darnest thing happen Oops. where, um, you know, played for a little bit, rebought, came back in. And luckily, the floor guy, he got my cash. And it, here's where the plot kind of thickens a little bit. It gets interesting. I use the restroom for about two minutes. I come back. All my money's gone. <laughs> so so you're saying that you – so this isn't like a little card club in Montana or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, when I was in Montana, I was in a town called Ennis, which is – where's Montana State? Mm-hmm. Where's yeah. Montana State? Montana State. Is in Bozeman. Bozeman, if you right. have to go down there, hit up the Cat's Paw. Really good game. Right. So, what is Ennis like? An hour away from Bozeman or something like that? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I was in Ennis and like, yeah, they were like bars that had like legit like poker tables where you could play for money, right? You deal your own or some shit like that. Uh, yeah. It's, it's it's cowboy poker down there sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, the only thing we got up here is like one two no in it, but. We'll have some games where we'll play like two five just because you know you get some people a little crazy. It's always a good time though. So do you guys? So when you're so do you do you deal your own or are there floor men and stuff and dealers? Yeah, they got a they got a dealer. They got their the floor guy, but he deals too. Okay, so the floor guy deals it's too. It's just a small room. It's just a small room though, but so it's always a good time. So you're playing in this game, and there's only one table going, or a couple of tables going. There's only one table going, and we got about. X amount of people, but it's funny. And I already knew where my money went. It went to the drunk guy uh, who was sitting to my left. <laughs> so, so you're saying that you went to the bathroom and you came back and someone had taken your chips or somebody was playing on top of your chips? Um, they took my chips. The way I position my chips is I will just have a little bit of, to the left of me. That way, if I'm checking out my cards or something, they can't see it. But yeah, it was uh, two stacks of a red and then just a couple of green chips. Maybe like two seventy five, nothing too bad. Okay, but um, yeah, I say, where's my money? And then um, you know, the dealer, <laughs> and then it gets the awkward lull of silence. I already know the drunk guy took it, and by the way, I don't think he maliciously took it. I just think it was um, probably a little crazy. So, but he's playing at the table, right? Correct. Correct. So you think he might have palmed it by mistake or something like that? Exactly. I don't. I don't think he had any malicious intentions. I just think he was probably drunk or wasted. So how did you broach the situation? Tried to do it as diplomatically as possible, of course, as our fellow DJ and poker players know. But at the end of the day, I just let the uh, let the dealer know right off the bat. I said, uh, hey, I had about 275 here. It just got taken. So we need to address this right now. You get on the camera. We call the floor. Let's get this resolved. Uh huh. Because now um, they were saying, oh, they're like, oh, yeah, he must have taken it. One of the other players was playing along the lines of, because all the guy basically had was green chips, just 25 bucks, mm-hmm. maybe 800 or something. He had a couple of stacks of red. So, I mean, anybody with a brain could figure that out, what happened. So we called the floor. It got resolved. But at the end of the day, I did have to cause some shit just to get it to get resolved. It, luckily, it finally did. However, uh, drunk man only wanted to give me two hundred. <laughs> I had choice words with him. So we got it resolved. It was a gentleman's agreement. So he only get, so he only wanted to give you two hundred, and then what did you tell the the rest of the room? Basically, the I floor. Said, excuse absolutely, me. hell no! I had about two seventy five here. That's not going to happen. Uh-huh. We need to make this right. Get this resolved. So the floor guy, he gets there. I said, hey, man, check out the camera if you want to. Here's what I had. He didn't check it out, but he just let us settle it amongst each other, which I took 275. However, the floor was pretty cool because he gave me like at least 10 or 15 bucks extra, you know, just to cover if anything went wrong or anything. But it, it was just interesting, and I just recommend to anybody at the table, always protect your chips, even if you're gone. Well, so the, it's, it's unfortunate the dealer didn't catch it, but that's so, okay, I guess. So it kind of seems like this is more of a, a little bit of a, 
uh, I would say more less formal than not that card rooms are formal in California, but uh, sure. a, a little bit less formal. It's just a one table going, and the guy's drunk. But oh, yeah. part of the reason why I wanted to everybody go over, knows each other, right? Part of the reason why I wanted to go over this though too, because I think a lot of these viewers don't understand this, is that you know it's obvious what happened in your case, but right. And I've seen this before, and I was actually at the oh, World yeah. Series of Poker. Sitting next to this is part of the reason why large PLO games don't go on at the World Series of Poker. This might have been actually almost 10 years ago. I've seen it before in California, not to this extent, but then I saw it at the World Series. And if anybody's been to the World Series many, many years, this was when they used to do the bracelet ceremony in at on the stage in the pavilion. If anybody remembers when DraftKings like had their thing like four or five years ago, this was before that they would do the bracelet ceremony at uh, DraftKings and Pavilion. And this guy, this Euro guy, he was playing like a big PLO game. It was like 25, 50, 100, right? And he had like $70,000 in chips, big chips and stuff that he left on the table, okay? And he walked over to the stage because his buddy had won a bracelet, right? Somebody random came over to the table, said to the table, Hey, like, um, whatever's friends, he told me to pick up his chips, took the chips and walked off with them. 70 grand. Uh, I saw vice come in to, and, and, uh, you know, I saw the Vegas police come in and they will not make good on that. I've also seen it to a lesser extent in California where someone has just basically went over and took 500 chips. So if you, the guy went to the bathroom, guy came over, took a bunch of yellow chips, which are the $5 chips in LA like a rack and then left right and you would think you'd be right. like well, i've heard about that it's crazy right because you you'll have it on i was even reading the reddit forums and i was like what the hell it's like i came out okay i knew the people it was fine but sure some but, places they'll just steal it from you and never come back and you're screwed well and people are like well how, how does the casino not make good on that and it's the reason why they can't make good on that is is because you could run a scam right you could run a scam exactly. on the casino you know, it's kind of almost like, uh, and it actually makes sense from the casino's perspective. I didn't really thought it through. It's it's almost like why you wouldn't want to pay a ransom to someone, right? You know, we don't negotiate with terrorists because exactly. it sets a precedent. It's kind of the same thing here. Is just like if you do that, and then you know someone could just be like, "Oh, this guy stole this money," and you know, what are they going to do? Pay it, pay it out. But from everywhere, my understanding for all you people that might not necessarily be accustomed to live poker. <laughs> the fact that your chips are on the table, the, somebody can come and take them. So that's why you'll see people take their large chips off of the table. Now, no one, I mean, I'm not going to fucking deal with like taking, you know, stacks of $5 chips off the table. I'm just not, I mean, it, I'm not going to walk away with a couple hundred bucks each time I go to the bathroom. Right. right? Exactly. But if I had like five case or one case. Yeah. Definitely. Right? Cash. I mean, a lot of people don't play with cash anymore on the table, but be careful out there. Those the fact that your chips are on the table does not mean that someone can't come come along and steal them. <laughs> I know so, that's the first time it's ever happened to me. Luckily it all worked out. Um initially it wasn't cool, but luckily I had a good floor and dealer, so they took care of it. But I just wanted to kind of call in just because I'm sure people have this happen to them all the time. Well, I mean, I don't know about all the time, but I think some people aren't aware it's that rare. it's, it's you know, your chips are sort of, in, you know, it, I think what it's assumed that, but you know, how, like, especially on a busy night, but it's kind of assumed that other players at the table wouldn't allow somebody to come up and take your chips, right? But you can see that, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you're playing in a busy room, <laughs> like on a Friday night at Commerce or something like that, where there's like sure. 10, 5, 10 tables going, and people are moving in and out, they might not be paying yeah. attention to it. Um, but anyways, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. I'm no, glad you got it. Like... I appreciate the CLP mask. Thank you. Oh, you're one of those guys. Cool. Well, maybe I'll get up to yeah, Montana for some fly fishing again one, one sometime in my life. You should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it, man. <laughs> All right. How you do on the election? We'll see. Uh, yeah, Take care. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Right. Later. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.